What's up everyone, Bradley Jack Design here with another design breakdown and if you're here you want to see how I made this Leonard Floyd graphic. So I'm going to break down all the tools it took for me to use this, I'm going to show you layer by layer what it took for me to create this design. So let me hide everything, I've got everything hidden pretty much. So. Normally I start off and show you guys how I made the background, but I'm going to show you how I actually went about this design. So this design all started because I found this photo of Leonard Floyd and it looked like he was breathing fire or doing something. It looks like I could easily put fire up here and make it look realistic. So I found this photo of him, uh, did some editing to it, clipped it out, threw it on this blank background here and then I found a couple photos of fire so this one is masked out of pretty much all the fire you can see it's not masked out perfectly but in the end it doesn't really matter so you know let me just mask it out now there that's better so this is just a photo I found on Google if I actually go ahead and open that you can see it's someone breathing fire so that's why I have all of you know there's three different shapes in here um, I had this first one in the middle here, but some people had some comments about it, so I went ahead and changed it to the smaller one, just so it looked better. Um, so first what I did was threw him in here, threw in this fireball that he was blowing, and then I wanted to set him in a scene. So that's where this background comes into play. So I knew I needed some sort of ground for him to be on, something rocky and uh, barren like a desert or something with volcanoes so I found this photo on unsplash and then I found a bunch of other photos to correlate with it that I put together so um, here's another photo you can see there's clearly a guy here that I didn't see the first time so there's a guy here filming someone behind him so I just wanted to add some more rocks in the background I've got some lightning going on up here and you can see there's some funky things going on where I erased some stuff here and I erased some of the parts over here and I'll show you what that actually looks like in a little bit. Went ahead and threw a levels layer on it, just drug some of these around until it was darkened as I wanted and actually what I did was I did all of these edits underneath this gradient map. So this gradient map is using the colors that are in this flame so I went ahead and selected some of the colors from the flame. That way the coloring and the lighting was all matching what the light source is, which assuming in this is this fireball. So I added a couple more things, but I wanted to have slightly different lighting on them. I didn't want the this gradient map to apply to them. They have their own individual gradient map applied to them with a couple levels layers to manipulate how it looks. So I wanted to throw a volcano over there, found this really sweet sky that had some lightning in it over here and then it matches the lightning over here put a levels layer on that to darken it same gradient map but with slightly different tweaks than the other two so you can see i've got this nice uh, merged together background they use the same gradient maps just at different scales so all the colors match then what i have on top of that is just a couple of vignettes sort of a stock image i have to darken up the top um, I just have that duplicated twice. These are just set to multiply to get rid of the white. And uh, just to say, the uh, fireball layer is set to screen. Um, let me mention that. So I have one set to screen and one set to screen on top of it to 50% because I wanted it to be brighter than it was initially. So let me scroll back down here. And then I have a color lookup under, or not under, on top of the whole background set to candlelight, which glues everything together it fades away a lot of the color um, and just makes it this more uh, muted tone so that's what I used to blur the background together I then actually took that background tweaked it a bit so I went in the blur gallery and I think I set a tilt shift blur to just the ground here so anything that starts like here and up blurs and here and down blurs. And then I use lens correction to distort it here at the bottom. So you can see this uh, red and green distortion where the camera was off. 
um, and they weren't aligned. I wanted that effect to happen, so I went ahead and used the lens correction filter to make that happen. Then on top of this, I've got a, a uh, it's called a group, <laughs> a group called ground darkening. And what this does is I took this photo I have, set it to multiply so it gets rid of the white, set the levels layers, and basically I just wanted to create sort of this halo effect where his feet were. So it's hypothetically saying that this light source is only shining on this area, not back here. These of course are emitting light in the distance, but it's not what we're worried about here. And then I've got another layer to darken up the whole background. This is just a levels layer set to multiply. And I just went in and painted and darkened all around it. So you can really see that the light source is only emitting light in this specific area. So then we've got Floyd himself. So I have a ton of layers here you can see. And basically each of these layers are me coloring on top of him to create the effect that this is shining color and light on his body. So this first layer is just cleaning up some of the discoloration. So if you look in his helmet here, if I turn this off and turn it back on, it's getting rid of the green. Um, it's fixing some of the green overcast from where the grass is that he's clearly standing on. But he's not standing on grass in this, he's standing on rocks. So I needed to get rid of that. On top of that, I've got three main color layers. So the first one's set to hue, the second is overlay, and then the third is also overlay. And these are set to different opacities. So the first one's set to 100, second is 100, and the third is 50. And that's just because I wanted to add a little bit more color um, or a little bit more brightness to the orange that I was adding. So what I did was I sampled some orange from the flame here like I did for the background. And I just painted on his chest and on his face where light would be emitting. Things closest to the flame essentially. I did the same thing with this overlay. Got a little bit of his arm here, a little bit of the jersey down here, a little bit broader in my strokes. And these are all masked to this layer. So if you hold down the option key and click in between layers, it'll mask it to the layer below it. Um, and if you haven't used mas layer masks before, that means that basically everything is only showing up masked in between this layer. So. Um, anything inside the outer lines of the, his body essentially. So it's not showing up in the background, it's only showing up on his jersey. Anyway, moving on. So I think I duplicated this layer, set it to overlay, painted a little bit more on his body here. So you can start to see the effect we're getting coloring his body. The next layers, these are all levels layers, either set to multiply or screen. The screened layers are going to brighten up his body and the multiplied layers are going to darken his body and you can see I have different layer masks on each of these so what I did was I created a new layer I inverted the mask you can just hit command I if you have the mask portion selected uh, to make it black and then I took a soft brush set to white at like 20% opacity and went ahead and brushed in certain areas I wanted this one's actually set to overlay. So what does this one do? So this one is actually, you can see it really deepens the tones of the oranges on there. This next one is set to screen. So this is where I went and started brightening things up. So I brushed in pretty much the same areas that I did with the orange. Same with this one. This is also set to screen. So I do these in many increments because I want to be able to control the light, the lighting on it as much as possible. So if I do one screened layer with a soft 20% brush and brush multiple times, it might only be 60% opaque or transparent. And then if I duplicate it, it adds on a little bit more and then I can go in and brush in areas I don't like. Then we've got a multiplied layer and this is going to be on his legs, underneath the helmet, on his arm on his butt here and down here on his legs. And that's what these next layers are. Continually getting darker and darker and darker and darker until I get the desired effect I want. So you can see by knowing where the light source is, using screened multiplier, screened levels layers to paint where the light is hitting, 
and use multiplied levels layers to paint where the light is not hitting, you can darken and lighten images and play around with lighting. Then over all of this, I have a screened layer just to brighten up the whole thing. So this isn't masked to it because I wanted to brighten up some of the background if it hit it, but this brightens up the, the whole photo of Floyd here. So then his feet are on grass and the way I clipped it, there's not a clean clip at the bottom where you know grass would be. So, you know, look, this is clearly grass. This isn't rocks. This looks stupid. So to combat that, I just went ahead and found these rocks and I blurred them and I put them in the front. So they're covering up that area. Didn't like it, so I covered it up. And I used that same lens correction that I did on the bottom to add a little bit of distortion to this layer as well. So then I have a vignette on the bottom. So the same one I used up here in the background, I have down here at the bottom. So if I turn that on, it'll darken up the bottom here. And then I added some overlays on top of the graphic. So I have some sparks here on the left that I blurred slightly, some sparks on the right that I blurred slightly. I have some sparks in the front all over that I used a lens correction on just to distort them a little bit. And then I have a lens dirt on top of all of that, but that looks terrible because it's so white, it's so cold. So I added the same gradient map to it which warmed it up, made it orange and red. It looks a lot better. Then on top of all of this, I've got some color lookups. So you've seen me use lookups before. Um, they're sort of like filters that you can use uh, to give your designs or photos the same theme or the same feel. The first one I did was Kodak 2395 by Adobe set to 50%. I do this on a lot of my graphics. It really de it takes away a lot of contrast in them, but then I build it back up with some of these other color lookups. So I use one called Foggy Night set to 20%, which you can see does that, sort of fogs things up a bit. Uh, I have one set to 20% called Edgy Amber that's gonna make everything orange. So it gives everything a more orange hue to get back some of that orange. Then I have candlelight set to 30%. And you can see that sort of fades everything out just slightly. So I liked how this looked overall as a composition, but it took away a lot of the flame and a lot of the color. So I went ahead and added a hue and saturation filter and I bumped up the, I think reds. Yeah, I bumped up the reds. I bumped up the yellows at all. Yeah, I bumped up the reds and yellows because that's orange. And it really gives me the color back into the composition and this design. Then I took this photo, saved it as a JPEG, threw it back in. You can just highlight everything and save it as a smart object. But I took that and I did some distortion on it to give us this. So I went ahead and used a lens correction filter, the same one we did on the background where it is um, offsetting the magenta and the green, the blue and the red um, and, the, and the other two, basically to add a little bit of a distortion around the edge. And you can see it distorted the edges a little bit. Then I just threw my standard watermark that I've been putting on these bears graphics. And then I set an edgy amber set to 25%. I put that on top of my um, logo and watermark just because I wanted it to match the graphic more otherwise it was going to stick out like a sore thumb so that's what it took that's the Leonard Floyd graphic I have there um, I hope you guys pick something up on this I get a lot of questions about how I make backgrounds I use a lot of gradient maps to blend everything together you can use more than one gradient map um, it doesn't matter where the photo came from or what it looked like I mean if I turn these gradient maps off well I gotta turn this distort off and this distort off. So let me show you what this background looks like without these gradient maps. Trash, trash. It's not working. There it is. Now let me turn off all this stuff. So this is what the background looks like. I mean, these colors don't match. There's this weird banding from where I erase stuff. These lighting bolt looks stupid. And this is really gray and doesn't match any of the colors here. But if you throw the gradient maps back on it, it becomes a, you know, fleshed together 
background that you can use in your design. So thanks for watching this breakdown. Um, again, if you guys have any other breakdowns you want me to, you want me to do, if you want for me to show you how I made it, uh, go ahead and drop that in the comments below. Go ahead and follow me, follow me on Instagram at Bradley Jack Design. Um, other than that, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.